Here we see another good look by Alabama, and this time getting the ball to somebody different is Christian Jones. And, and it's, Mike, it's kind of a run play, kind of a pass play. Not really sure what to call it, but all I know is Christian Jones got a good feel of the defense right here and was able, able to catch a good ball. What you see is kind of a run blocking concept by the offense line, whether or not they, they, you know, they're they blocking run play or not. They're trying to sell it up front. You know, they see kind of guys sealing off their box on the backside. And, uh, you know, Blake just getting rid of the ball right in the last minute. But the guys do a good job up front and make sure they seal off their guys and, uh, you know, trying to open up lanes up front. And this, this uh, angle right here is a good job of Blake reading it out. So right here, Amari is going to be his first read underneath. And Christian is coming back here in behind him. So when he's going to look at Amari first, but he sees this defender right here, right in the zone. So what he does is just give Christian time to find the void in the defense, and he's able to hit the soft spot because the safety is out of position. You can see the safety on this hash right here. We do a good job of staying far enough away from the corner over here so he can't make a play, and also far enough from the safety at the same time. Does a good job of not forcing it to Amari and getting it to Christian right behind him. He does a good job of feeling the safety, catching it, and holding on to it. You can see him resetting right there and not throwing it to Amari underneath, taking a shot like we saw earlier in the game. I think this play right here speaks volumes about Lane Kiffin and what he's brought to this offense. He gives the Blake Sims and his playmakers the ability to make plays and make decisions on the field. I think that's what you kind of see open up right there. Still a really tight game right here in the winding seconds of the third quarter, and we see another pocket movement by Blake. And really, I think what makes this play is, is once again the play action fake. We see the linebackers really get out of position um, when we have this fake right here to Derrick Henry. This other running back is coming down across and making it even more difficult, but just watch these linebackers get out of position and really setting up a nice block as you see Cam Robinson come back to seal the block and seal, seal the play, really. Right. What you have is Ken Robinson kind of taking two guys, and really that creates mismatches on the defense. He's, the, the linebacker's reading run so hard that he kind of steps up into our left tackle's face. He's able to push the defensive end across as he's reading the play and actually catch the linebacker coming back across. It's really the defensive line's moving lateral. It's a great play for the offensive line. They're able to sell this because they're able to run the ball so successfully that the defense has got to kind of step up and, and, and block these run plays coming downhill. Yeah, and definitely. When this linebacker right here runs a loop, Cam's got him sealed. And then his actual responsibility, you can see him right here getting in a lot of trouble because he's supposed to be guarding Christian Jones that comes underneath, who ends up making a big play. And as we've seen time and time again, we have two of our stars right here, DeAndre White and Amari Cooper, downfield blocking and getting just enough to spring this play that ends up being a 20-yard. And once again, we watch Amari down here, and it's not the big, you know, knockout block, but he gets just enough to make this guy run around where he can't make the play. Right. He's trying to get his friends some touches, get his guy in the end zone, and it's, it speaks volumes about the way this team's played all year. It's just people helping people, trying to get uh, explosive plays down the field. And then Christian gets – you know, three guys around him at the 10-yard line is able to fight down to the one, setting up another score for the Alabama right. offense. Yeah, you see Brian Vogler also flying down the field, catching a block late, trying to get his guy in the end zone. It just ends up being a huge play for Alabama. So as soon as we've been talking about not the pancake blocks and, and the non-sports center type blocks, we see it right here from Jostin Fowler, who's lined up right off the end, third and eight. Um, it just does a good job of getting a hat on this guy right here coming out of the flat. Yeah, what you're seeing here is Jocelyn Fowler really learning his technique. They're telling him to get his hat downfield, not let that guy get up, and kind of get his shoulder on that guy's inside shoulder. Ends up being a great block, great point of contact, and allows Amari to really get downfield to make a play. So here it is right here, just kicking him out and uh, making a good play. We got offensive linemen blocking downfield, and Amari just making a play, and the reason that – you know, he'll probably end up in New York for the, for the Heisman Trophy voting. Just getting the ball quick to him, letting him make him play. There's the knockdown pancake block that you love to see. But Amari just, just making another play. And the offensive linemen, as they've done all year, making right. blocks. It's a, it's a typical screenplay for an offensive lineman, left guard and center. You see kind of getting out in front of the runner. But it's a little bit different dynamic when it's thrown to the wide receiver. You don't see the running back coming out of the backfield. But same concept, get the defensive line up field, uh, you know, get some bleed blocks down the field, get some big guys out in front. They did a great job leading them down the field. First and 10 right here, midway through the fourth quarter, and we're going to try to take a shot. I think this is the kind of area in the zone between the 40s where you love to take big plays downfield. It's easy for a, a, a play caller, Lane Kiffin, to call it because, you know, we're close to field goal territory. But it's first and 10, and, you know, the best thing Blake does right here besides running for the first down and getting a big run is not forcing. You see him trying to want to take it right there. It's not there, pulls it down, um, makes a great spin move for a big pickup. Yeah, this is the same blocking concept they used on DeAndre White's long touchdown earlier in the game. You, what you're trying to do is create double teams. Leave one guy backside for Vogler and, and – 
and Nudie to kind of take one guy, kind of get him out of the play. You kind of got a lot of double teams along the front. Uh, the, the play's just not there like it was earlier. So Blake does a good job of pulling things down, allowing his guy to make blocks and, and getting up the field. Good run by Blake. Spin move, doing it all, just getting downfield. Now we're in field goal territory. Going to go up three scores. Ended up sticking it in, but, you know, just another good play by Blake. What I love about this is it's kind of in the, the moment of the game where you say, who wants it more? You know, are you going to put this game away? Or are you going to allow Missouri to come back in this? Blake makes a great play late in the game, kind of tries to put things away late in the, in the fourth quarter. Derrick Henry had a big day rushing. This was one of the big plays right here, you know, a 25-yard run. Let's take a look at it and see what sprung him free. You know, we've seen so many of these big explosive plays from Derrick. And once he gets going, he's tough to stop. As big as he is, he runs really, really well. And, Mike, tell us about what's going on in the blocking scheme right here that allows him to really go in untouched. What you have here is what we call an outside blown, uh, zone blocking concept with a lead back, which you see Jostin Fowler outside. He's able to pick up whoever comes off. Uh, but you see a great double team, what we call a triple block between Austin Shepard and Brian Vogler, where they're kind of passing off the defensive end, whoever he plays into, and Vogler's able to get up to the second level and really make a seal block on this outside linebacker. Ends up being a beautifully blocked play and, and obviously springs him for a long touchdown. So this is what we're talking about, the, the communication. Us two have these two guys, and at the snap of the ball, you really don't know how you're going to do it. You have to adjust as they're, as they're going through the play. Right. The goal here is to use the double team blocks to actually block the linebackers. And you have good push up front. You're able to kind of get some seal blocks on the edge. And Austin Shepard and Vogler do it perfectly on the edge and able to spring him outside for the, for the touchdown. Okay, another big run by Derrick Henry that really seals the game and puts it out of reach for Missouri. Um, you, we've seen the, the play action. We've seen it a couple times now. We saw it throughout the game. Something that Missouri was definitely keen on. But on this play right here, it's a run play. And we can see Blake Sims selling the, selling the bootleg. And as he's doing that, this linebacker that's, that's the guy to make the play for the Tigers is completely out of position. You'll see him running – Run like a bad man trying to tackle Blake, and he has no idea where the ball is, and just Derek doing a good job of getting downfield. Right. When you've blocked as well as they have up front for the game, you, you know, you're king on Blake Sims. He's been making plays all day. You want to make sure you keep him uh, from, from being the one that breaks the back, but it ends up working against him right here. They're able to create leverage up front, giving Derek Henry enough time to make his kind of jump cut in the backfield, if you will, in this inside zone run scheme, uh, and it really works against him. The linebacker goes flying out for the bootleg like they've been running all day, like we've been talking about on the Nakeds. And it uh, really works against him. He flies out of the hole, and Derrick Henry hits it right behind Austin Shepard, able to make a big gain. Yeah, and Vogler are doing a nice job of coming behind Blake, kicking it out, and really getting the play started. Right, that's where this play wants to go. When you inside zone run, the cutback lane is always the one you want. You know, you know you're never going to predetermine where the ball's going, but you know, that's definitely where your running back's keeping his eyes. And they just do a good job of finding the hole right here. So, Mike, we spend all the time talking about the quarterback and Amari Cooper and all of our big explosive plays. But while we have you here, let's talk about Cam Robinson, the offensive line. You know, we have a true freshman and really a big question mark at the beginning of the season. These guys were untested, unproven, and have really shown to be, you know, a big anchor up front for, for the offense. What have you seen from these guys and how they have evolved and adapted as the season has progressed? Well, I think what you saw early in the year was a bunch of first-year starters with a first-year quarterback, an 18-year-old left tackle. Uh, coming in and trying to mesh together and didn't have a lot of time when the season began. But I think it speaks to what Coach Cristobal's done, what, what Coach Kiffin has done, what Coach Saban preaches. The guys have worked hard every week, and you can see that they've come to play the last few weeks. Cam Robinson will be an anchor for years to come. He's, he's one of our best players on the team. The guy's an incredible talent. Ari Kwanjo has been able to lock down that left guard spot. Leon Brown coming in at right guard has really done some good things. And then, of course, you have the senior leader in Austin Shepard, who's really been the go-to guy when you're looking for a good play you see them cutting off of him a lot I think it speaks to Blake Sims and his ability to move around in the pocket help those guys out as much as he can and the running backs ability to make plays but these guys have meshed really well it's been incredible to watch them over the course of the year I think it was a concern coming into the season and it's turned out to be one of our strength on offense definitely and I think Another thing that's helped is, like you just said, is Lane Kevin moving the pocket. It seems like the, the, the launch angle that we talked about where the quarterback's throwing the ball from, where he's launching the ball from, is, a, is really inconsistent. So it might be out of the pocket one time, a sprint out, a bootleg. There's a lot of things going on that, that help those guys out and help them get good blocks. Right. You don't have that, that so-called dominant offensive line that you have in the past of the Chance Warmack, DJ Flukers, 
Barrett Joneses. But what you have is a bunch of guys that are able to work together and an athletic quarterback that's able to make them look good in certain situations. It really helps out that Blake can move the pocket, kind of get out on the edge, make plays, and, and quick throws to Amari Cooper. You've seen it all year. That really helps an offensive line out, staying out of those third and long situations, able to pick up you know, early yards on the early rundowns and, and not get in those bad situations. And I think you've seen it play out really well uh, here in you know, the, half, the last half of the uh, season. Yeah, and as we come off the SEC championship win right here, I think not only the offensive line getting better, but the whole team. You know, coming from the, the early loss to Ole Miss where we thought, you know, the roof was coming down to where we're at now, I think there's just been a constant progression of everybody getting better. Um, and you can see it not only on, on offense and defense. You know, the special teams was a big concern after the, after the Arkansas game. And it's just, you know, guys are getting better. Guys are doing their assignments more, more soundly. Well, Nick's been preaching all year. It's been a very enjoyable team. You know, it's a lot of good guys in the locker room. I think when you have that, it's, it makes it easier to come to work every day. It makes it easier to do your job, kind of spend that time in the weight room and that time in the film room. Really get, you know, get everybody on the same page when you love the guys you're working with. I think you've seen that kind of play out on this team. And they've done nothing but improve every week in my mind. I think it's going to be exciting to kind of see them play out and try to reach their destiny, you know, like you say a lot in this college football playoff. Definitely. So we got two games left, hopefully. For sure we've got the first round of the college football playoff coming to go up against Ohio State. So we'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll get back to you later on this month, and we'll, you know, see what those guys are going through. It's, it's preseason practice kind of all over. Get some work for the young guys. But at the same time, you have to get ready for these, playoff, these football playoffs coming up. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Hopefully we have two more games left, and hopefully we bring you some more footage coming on later in the season. But for Mike Johnson, I'm John Parker Wilson. Thanks for joining us again in the AL.com Film Room.